John Eastman, the crackpot lawyer, as former Vice President Mike Pence referred to him, who helped to uh, construct the fake electors scheme and the plan to have Mike Pence unilaterally you know, reject the results of a free and fair election and was in the room for all these conversations or many of them as they constructed what we now know as the coup attempt that occurred uh, by Trump and his allies in 2020 and 2021. And he appeared on Laura Ingram's show. He has been indicted as well out of the Fonnie Willis case. And he is speaking up for himself. And legal experts have weighed in on this clip I'm about to show you and said it, he's kind of saying things that absolutely can and will be used against him in a court of law um, in this upcoming trial if his goes to that and is incriminating himself admitting in part to some of the crimes being alleged here so we'll look at this then we'll look at laura ingram funnily enough even though she's a fox news host she loves the dishonesty actually trying to uh at least protect fox news from liability for what he's saying by saying i don't know about all those widespread voter fraud claims which was good to see shutting those down a little bit john and, and just again so to be clarify this on January 6th, what did you want to happen? And how was that historically grounded? And the history of our well, country, how would that have taken place? So just so the viewers can understand what would have unfolded and how that would have ultimately been constitutional. So there were you know, uh, several things. Some people had urged that Vice President Pence simply had power to reject con uh, electors uh, whose certification was still pending in yeah, legal contest. I don't believe contests. that, but go ahead. I don't believe I, that. I, I, I don't <laughs> That's either. one thing and I don't I, agree with. Go, Laura. <laughs> and I explicitly told Vice President Pence in the Oval Office on January 4th that even though it was an open issue, under the circumstances we had, I thought it was the weaker argument, and it would be foolish to exercise such power even if he had it. Okay. What I recommended, and I've said this repeatedly, is that he accede to requests from more than 100 state legislators in the swing states to give them a week to try and sort out the impact of what everybody acknowledged was illegality in the conduct of the election. election. I don't and think I specifically everyone acknowledged said, it. Yeah, not everyone acknowledged well, it, but that was the argument that was being made, obviously. And there were obviously that, well, that, irregularities but, that everybody had seen, but whether that was, yeah, they, they, whether it rose to the level of changing the outcome of the election, again, without a legal proceeding in the states that mattered, the, the argument ultimately w was a difficult one to make. I mean, hence, hence here we are. So you can dress up however you'd like. What are obvious attempts to block or pause the certification of the lawful electoral count? The send it back to the states thing, excuse me, uh, doesn't get you out of trying to obstruct, impede a lawful governmental constitutional process, being the uh, ceremonial role that the vice president uh, plays of overseeing and counting the electoral count. It's already locked in. This, going to the state legislatures and saying, but Give us a pause. What does that even mean? Give us a week to sort out the stuff we've had weeks to and we can't prove. And now we've had years to and we can't prove. So he's saying there, yeah, the plan was, or kind of, again, in more soft language, but still admitting to the fact that the plan was to halt the certification, which is a part of the issue here, was that they were trying to obstruct a lawful proceeding. Um, a governmental proceeding and you can't do that and that was the plan and there's so much more so just that is not everything but interesting that he would go on national television and speak to any of this really I'm sure his lawyers are not super pumped about it and then you have this why did you decide to speak out tonight knowing um, that anything you say to the media or uh, to this uh, program could then be potentially used against you. Well, Laura, first, thanks for having me on. Uh, look, I've been speaking out all along. Uh, we did nothing wrong. We were challenging the election for what even uh, Vice President Pence described as serious allegations of fraud and numerous instances of officials violating state law. And if we can't speak out about that, then our freedom of speech, our right to petition the government for redress of grievances are gone. 
But also importantly, I'm an attorney, and you know the people that I was representing had a right to counsel. And what's going on here with the bar complaints against everybody involved in any of the litigation, this Fulton County complaint, the unindicted co-conspirators in the federal action, they're trying to stifle people from being able to get representation in election challenges. They've made that very clear that that's what they're up to, and we can't allow it to happen. So, not true. Uh, you can absolutely do your lawyering and your freedom of speeching and your grievancing and all of it. Uh, it's whenever you then attempt to work outside of the lawful process that we have, for example, lying even about our elections, you can do that, or challenging within the courts our elections, you can absolutely do that. We have a whole process for it. Wonderful. Then when you start trying to put forward a fraudulent slate of electors asserting those to be the lawful ones and then trying to use that to justify Trump just staying in the White House, that can't be allowed. Let me explain why, John Eastman. If that was allowed, then the electoral college process, the lawful steps we have to decide who is technically elected as president, would become very unstable and very uh a lot less legitimate because it would be a battle of which electors will we get the vice president to acknowledge as the real ones and we're just going to say we have a few friends over here who signed some forms here sign this form yeah okay this says that they're the real elector and trump actually won uh, georgia or whatever and so he's going to just stay in the white house until we get this stuff sorted out which will be in four years it's ridiculous now here's the moment where uh laura ingram to the best of her ability as a Fox host, shut down what he was saying about widespread voter fraud. Um, uh, the fact of the matter is, oh, you know, one of the other things they said, well, Bill Barr said there wasn't any evidence of fraud. Well, I had lots of evidence of fraud. I haven't seen that evidence and I'm always wanting to see everything. So I haven't I haven't I haven't seen that evidence and I'd love to see that evidence. But, John, the thing that I always can't come back to in this particular case is that the Trump team didn't have the legal work done on the early side, right? But pre-election, pre, you know, whether it was mail-in ballots or ballot harvesting oh. or the, the lousy laws that were being passed in some of these states in a, in, a, in a manner that should never have happened. Okay. And you could have litigated that, I guess, as she's saying, in the courts. That's where the constitutionality is decided of state uh, laws. But there it is. John Eastman, not doing himself a lot of favors, going on national TV talking about certain elements of the broader plot to overturn the election outside of our lawful process. I don't exactly understand it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are able to be uploaded to the YouTube channel, plus get the bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. That's lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. And there's a link in the description.